Good morning, Couch Fans. How are you on this fine Friday morning? Yes, it is Friday morning. The snow's starting to fall a little bit out there, but it wasn't quite as bad as they were calling for, so hopefully um, it will just go away real quickly and turn in a little rain and just get out of here because they're calling for some warmer weather. That's an awesome thing. Hope everything's going well for you and your family. Hope you're staying from illness, staying away from the illness. Um, today we're going to work on the idea of sequences and series. Now these are things that we did when we were in pre-calc. Um, we'll elaborate this on Monday. We'll, we'll extend this a little bit on Monday. Um, but when we were in pre-calc, we talked about sigma series and sequences and what is meant to be a sequence and a series. Um, so that will be the review topics from pre-calc today. When we talk about a sequence, a sequence is a pattern of numbers. And once again, if I go too fast, hit your pause button and that will put me, stop me from talking. Okay, we have a pattern of numbers. When we have a pattern of numbers, we have a sequence. We have 3, 7, 11, 15, 19. This is a pattern of numbers. The pattern of numbers, okay, what we're doing from one term to get the next term, we are adding 4 in each case. If we have 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. What are we doing to go from 4 to 8 to 16 each time? Well, we are multiplying by 2. That's our pattern of numbers that we have there. Um, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. This is a pattern of numbers. But it's not an addition or it's not a multiplication. Okay, what this is, is our squares, our perfect squares of square one, square two, square three, square four, and so on. This was our pattern of numbers. Over here, one, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen. This is a pattern of numbers. Okay? Question is, what is occurring? Well, if we take the first two, add them together, we get the third number. Then if we take two and three add them together we get the fourth number if we take three and four add them together we get the next number these are called fibonacci fibonacci's numbers okay it's a pattern of numbers well what we talked about back in pre-calculus we have two that we dealt with uh, quite a bit in arithmetic sequence, which is a pattern of numbers such that a term and a previous term have a common difference. A pattern of numbers such that a term and its previous term have a common difference. And a geometric sequence is a pattern of numbers such that a term and its previous term have a common ratio. So we take a term and the previous term and there's a common difference between them for arithmetic. And when we take a term and a previous term, they have a common ratio. So if we take a look at what we've done up here, the first one is arithmetic. This is arithmetic. Because if I take a term and subtract off its previous term, I get a common difference. 7 minus 3 is 4. 11 minus 7 is 4. 35 minus 31 is 4. But I'm taking a term and subtracting off the previous term, and I get this common difference of a value of 4. The second one we had up here is a geometric because if I take a term and divide it by its previous term I get a common ratio so it must take a term divided by a previous term I get a common ratio so I take 8 divided by 4 I get 2 16 divided by 8 2 32 divided by 16 I get 2 so we have a common ratio of a value of two. So this is an arithmetic, this is geometric, and it's a pattern of numbers. 
When I talk about a finite sequence, you have an exact number of terms. A sequence with an exact number of terms. These up here are finite sequences because I stop at a certain number. Now if I do a plus or comma dot dot dot, then it turns into an arithmetic or a finite infinite se sequence. Hmm. So it's a sequence with an indefinite number of terms. And once again, these should be all review topics for you because we dealt with this in, in pre-calculus as we worked with them. Finite, you have a sequence of an exact number of terms. Infinite, you have an indefinite number of terms. Now when we deal with a series, when we talk about a series, it's the sum of the terms in the sequence. The sum of the terms in a sequence is a series. And we talk about an arithmetic series. <laughs> Maybe. It's the sum of the terms in an arithmetic series. Or a sequence, if I add up all the terms in the arithmetic sequence, um, that is an arithmetic series. In geometric, I take a geometric series and add up all the terms there. So arithmetic series, just basically when we deal with a series, we're adding up all the terms in the series or in a sequence. So if we take a look at our sequence here, if I have a finite number of terms, I can add them up. I can add them up. But what will happen when you have 500 terms or 400 terms and you have to add them up? We run into a problem. So if we took a look at what we did prior to this, okay, if we take 3 and 35 and add them together, we get 38. If we get 7 and 31, add them together, we get 38, and we get 11 and 7, 27, 38, uh, 15 and 23, we get 38. So that was what we dealt with before. Um, and then we have the value 19. We don't know what to do with that value 19. So when we talked about an arithmetic series, what we did with an arithmetic series when we found the sum of n number of terms with an arithmetic series, we took the average we took the average of the first and last term. And then we multiplied by the total number of terms. So we can take the average of our first and last term and then multiply by the total number of terms. So if we take a look, we have 3 plus 35. We can divide that by 2, and then we can count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we can multiply this by 9. So we have 38 divided by 2. This is 9 times 19. Uh, if we would multiply 9 times 19, we get 81, 8, let's do 171. And I know you can click the clack through the calculator and add them up, but when you have 500 terms, then that's a little bit different story. If we take a look at the next one, we have 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 plus 25. Uh, we don't have anything at this time to be able to add them up, so what we would have to do is just add these up and get a value. If we take a look at the geometric here, when we worked with a geometric, and we're taking the sum of n number of terms, what we did is we took our first term, T1, then we have one minus our ratio to the nth power, over one minus our ratio. 
So we can take our first term, which is a value of four. We have a common ratio here of a value of two. We have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven terms here. So we have four, one minus two to the seventh over one minus two. Now that one I'm gonna to have to clickly clack through. One minus two to the seventh. Multiply it by the value of four. And then divide by negative one we get a value of 508. And once again, Fibonacci's numbers, if we don't have anything here, uh, we would just have to click and clack it through our calculator. And then we went into a sigma notation. When we have a sigma, it looks like a pointy E, it means the summation of the sum of the terms. It's the sum of the terms. And how this is set up is we have a variable, we have a formula. This is the value we stop at. We have a value down here we start at. We have a value up here that we stop at. And then we have a formula that we deal with that would allow us to be able to Signal or to generate our values here. When we had an arithmetic series, we had our common difference times the k value, our variable, plus a constant. When we had geometric, we had a constant. We had our start value again, where we stopped. We had our ratio to the kth value. Once again, this should be all reviewed. So let's take a look at a problem here. First off, we'll, we'll just review some of the ideas. Um, we start with this value, we stop with this value for our value of k. So our first term is two times two plus one. So we have a value two times two, which is four plus one, which gives me a value of five. My second term, my next term, I increase my k value by one. So we have two times three plus one. So we have six plus one or seven. And then we have a k value of four. So we have two times four plus one. So we have eight plus one, which is a value of nine. And we will continue this series until we get to a k value of 10. So this will go all the way up till we get to a value of 2 times 10 plus 1. So this will continue on until we get to a value of 21. And then we will stop at this value then. What we could take a look at here is we could take a look at we have five, seven, nine, what type of series is this? Well, this is an arithmetic with a common difference of two. So we have an arithmetic series with a common difference of two. Well, how do we find the sum of all those terms? Well, we take our first term plus our nth term divided by two and then multiply by the total number of terms. So we take our first term, which is five, plus our last term, which is 21, divided by two, the average of the first and last terms. Now the total number of terms. Now how do we find the total number of terms? We take our top value minus our bottom value, and then add one. So we take 10 minus two, which is eight plus one. So we have a total of nine terms. Now, why do we have to add one? Because if you count these up, we start with two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So we have a total of nine terms there. 
Okay, if I just go 10 minus 2, I get 8, but I have to remember I have to start with the value of 2. We have to add that in. So we multiply by 9. So we have 26 here divided by 2, which is 13 times 9. So multiplying 13 times 9, we get 27, 117 as a value. When we talk a look, take a look at our geometric series here, our geometric series, if we take, we have a value of one as our first value, k is equal to one, so we have three times two to the one, plus then my next k value, three times two squared, plus three times two cubed, plus three times two to the fourth, plus three times two to the fifth. Okay, if we just take a look at what happens here, we get a value of 6, then we get a value of 12, then we get 24, then 48 plus 96. Now, if I was given this on a test, an ACT test or college entrance test, I would just add these up. I would click and clack it. I wouldn't try to remember the formula. But if we have 15 terms or 20 terms, that's more involved. Then we want to take a look at our formula. Sn is equal to our first term, T1, 1 minus R to the nth over 1 minus R. Well, what is our common ratio? Well, right here tells us our ratio is a value of 2. Our first term is a value of 6. So we have 6 times 1 minus 2 to the, we have a 5 minus 1 plus 1 to the fifth power over 1 minus 2. And once again, we can click and collect that through the calculator. 1 minus 2 to the fifth. I usually do what's inside the parentheses first so I don't lose a negative sign. 2 to the fifth. I get negative 31. Then I multiply by 6. And then divide by my negative 1. So we get 186. Once again, these should be reviewed for us, what we've done already from pre-calculus. Uh, let's see here. Well, what happens if I have this formula here? Well, let's see, I start with a value of two. So we have two plus one, which is three over two. Then my K value of three, that gives me four over three. Then my K value of four, we get a value of five over four. And this will continue on up till 10 over the value of nine. Now the question is, this is neither arithmetic or geometric, how do we add these up? Well, the only way we have to add these up is we would click the clack it through the calculator. Rewriting in sigma notation. We rewrite this in sigma notation. We have to come up with the formula in our k values where we start out at. Well, the first thing we need to identify is what type of series we have. We go 5, 11, 17. Well, that's going to be arithmetic. Our common difference is a value of 4. I'm sorry, is a value of 7. That was really bad. Where we have, oh, my bad. <laughs> It's a Friday. We have 11 minus five, which is six. 17 minus 11, which is six. So you have a common difference of six. I was close with the other ones. <laughs> so if we wanna write this in sigma notation, my difference, my difference is my coefficient to my variable. So we have 6K. Now what you have to figure out is what is my constant I'm gonna add into, and also what do I wanna start with? If you wanna start, you can start with any value you want, just so it's an integer, okay? Just so it's an integer, I can start with any value I want. Well, I'm gonna start with my K value is one. So I have six times one, which is six, but I need to come up with five. Well, what do we have to do? we have to subtract one. So I have six times five, which is six, or six times one, which is six. 
minus one, it gives me five. What I always do is I try to then do the second value there. My second value would be two, two, six times two, six times two, which is 12 minus one, that gives me the value of 11. So that gives me my second value. The last thing we have to figure out is what's my end value at? Where do I end up at? So what we do is we take our 6K minus one, what makes that equal to 65? Well, we add one to both sides. We get 6K is equal to 66 divided by six by six. K is equal to a value of 11. And once again, sometimes I will use K, sometimes I will use N there. You can use whatever variable you want. If we take a look at the next one, we have a geometric with a common ratio of six divided by two is three, 18 divided by six is three. So we have sigma, my common ratio is the base to our exponent. So we have our base, which is three to the K power. Now what I tend to do with this with the geometrics is I start my K value equal to zero. The reason why is if I take any base to zero power, I get a value of one. Well, I need to get my first term here. Well, what do I always multiply one by? Well, that's the value, or what can I multiply one by to get two, which is two. So I can have my first term and I have my ratio to the kth power. So that's typically what I do with a geometric. Then you have to figure out what you want to do uh, to get the last term, well, I, I could do a bunch of things. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven terms. So that tells me I have six. Six minus zero is six plus one, I get a value of seven. Or you can sit there and go with two K, or two times three to the K is equal to 1458. Divide both sides by two. So we have 3K is equal to 7, seven hundred twenty-eight, And to solve this, we could take the ln of both sides and solve an exponential problem. So we have K ln of 3 is equal to ln of 728. Divide both sides by the ln of 3 and you get the value of 6 then. That's another way of doing it, using logarithms. Well, what happens if I have neither arithmetic or geometric and I want to solve the problem? Well, what I tend to do I put n values there. This is my term number. When I have term number 1, I get 1 over 2. I get one over two. When I have term two, I get two over three, four over three. Term three, I get nine over four. What we have to ask ourselves is what do we self? What are we doing to n to get our top values? When n is one, I get one, n is two, I get four, n is three, I get nine, n is four, I get sixteen. What are we doing each time? We're squaring them. That's exactly correct. We're squaring them. If we take a look at the bottom, one, I get two, two, I get three, three, I get four, four, I get five. What are we doing every time to end to get to my bottom value? That's exactly correct. We're adding one to it. So we have n plus one. My start value, I start with n is equal to one, and my n value is a value of eight. Taking a look at the last one, once again, once again, n is one, n is two, n is three, n is four, n is five. The bottom is easier to figure out. What are we doing every time? When n is one, I get two, n is two, I get four, n is three, I get six. What are we doing to n every time? That's right, we are multiplying it by two. 
We have two n. Now on top, it's going to be a little bit trickier. When n is one, I get two. When n is two, I get five. Three, I get nine. Four, I get 17. What are we doing here? Well, if we take a look at the pattern of perfect squares, When you fall in the pattern of perfect squares, something deals with perfect squares. If we take a look, we add three, we add five, we add seven, we add nine. When you add the next odd number, that tells us that we are in a pattern of perfect squares. Well, if I take a look, I'm adding three, I'm adding five, I'm adding seven, I'm adding nine. I'm adding 11, so I'm in a pattern of perfect squares. So let's involve the square term in here somehow. Well, if I square one, I get one. If I square two, I get four. Square three, I get nine. Square four, I get seven, 16. Well, what do we do then to get to that next, or the value we want? Well, we add our one. So we have n squared plus one. Once again, this is review stuff that we did back when we were in pre-calculus. Um, we will continue to enhance using some other formulas in regards to sigma notation. We'll look at the n squared term and the n cubed term, what we can do to be able to calculate a series with an n squared or n cubed. We will do that on Monday. I posted a worksheet for you, posted the solutions for you. Once again, if you have any questions about anything, please feel free to ask the questions. I will try to respond back and try to help you out as much as possible. Other than that, I have nothing else for the weekend. Please get some work done. Uh, please try to continue to keep up with the material that we're dealing with here uh, and push yourself forward. Enjoy your weekend. Make sure you continue with your social distancing. Um, make sure you keep everybody safe around you. Other than that, adios. I miss you guys. I wish you were around. We'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.